Hello students, I, Ms. Bharti Sajdeva Sahani, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Nursing, Department of Medical Surgical Nursing, SGT University, will explain you about hypovolemic shock. Before we switch to hypovolemic shock, we must know what shock is. Shock is a life-threatening condition which is characterized by inadequate tissue perfusion, which means that the cells and organs do not get enough of the blood supply, oxygen supply and nutrients to function properly. Now there are three factors which decide these things that the cardiac output is adequate. These three factors are the blood volume, the heart and the vascular tone. Once these three factors are working in coordination, the cardiac output is good and the uh, cells and the body keep on receiving enough of the blood supply and the oxygen. But if any of these factors is altered, then the person may go into shock. Depending upon these three factors, there are three types of shock. First is hypovolemic shock if there is inadequate blood volume and this inadequate blood volume may be result of fluid shift or fluid loss. Second one is cardiogenic shock if the muscles of the heart are not pumping effectively and efficiently the result may be cardiogenic shock. And the third one is vasogenic shock or distributive shock that is if the sympathetic nervous system or the blood vessels itself are not able to maintain its tone that is the result is vasoconstriction or vasodilation resulting in the pooling of the venous blood resulting in inadequate cardiac output. Now in this tutorial we will be emphasizing upon hypovolemic shock. A hypovolemic shock is the most common type of shock which develops when the intravascular volume decreases to the point that it is not sufficient to maintain organ and tissue perfusion. The causes of hypovolemic shock we will be discussing further. Cardiogenic shock results primarily from an inability of the heart muscle to function adequately or from mechanical obstruction of the blood flow to or from the heart. And the last one is vasogenic shock also known as distributive shock results from inadequate vascular tone that is mo uh, most commonly vasodilation. The second one is blood volume remains the same just it gets shifted from intravascular department to the interstitial department. Vasodilation results in maldistribution of the blood and pooling of the venous blood. The causes of hypovolemic shock are actual blood or fluid loss that may be a result of hemorrhage, vomiting or diarrhea or a fluid shift that is the fluid does not leave the body just it leaves the intravascular compartment and shifts to the interstitial space and this shift may occur in case of burns. Hemorrhage it can be external or internal. Amount of blood loss and the length of time over which the blood loss has occurred depend, uh, will decide the fate of a person going into hypovolemic shock. Next cause is the burns. Then now can, there can be another causes which can cause fluid shift other than burns. These are nephrotic syndrome resulting in generalized edema, severe crush injuries, starvation, surgery, cirrhosis of liver, pancreatitis that, can, uh, that may result into ascites, bowel obstruction and dehydration. Here are a list of few causes which can result into hypovolemic shock. Now if fluid loss or fluid shift has occurred, how would it lead to shock? Fluid loss or fluid shift due to any of the reason will result into decreased circulatory blood volume. It will further lead to decreased preload. A preload is end diastolic volume that is if the heart is not receiving the adequate venous blood, it will not further pump the arterial blood to the rest of the body. So decreased preload will lead to decreased cardiac output and it will further affect the tissue perfusion and cell death or organ failure may occur. This is all about pathophysiology of shock and it is common to all types of shock basically. Now there are different stages. Our body when senses the fluid loss or fluid shift, it tries to compensate first with that loss. So depending upon this, there are three stages. First is non-progressive or compensatory stage in which without any intervention the body itself compensates for that loss or shift. Second is progressive or decompensatory stage and if not treated at time, it may lead to irreversible loss. There are different pathophysiologies in different stages. First is non-progressive or compensatory stage. The low cardiac output which we have discussed earlier that decreased blood volume will lead to decreased cardiac output. First of all, it will stimulate sympathetic nervous system and sympathetic nervous system will start releasing epinephrine and norepinephrine 
under the influence of these two vasoconstrictors, vasoconstriction will occur, increased systemic vascular resistance will be there and blood pressure will be maintained. On the other hand, when there is low cardiac output, there is decreased capillary blood flow and the hydrostatic pressure within the capillaries is lower down. Sensing this low hydrostatic pressure, the fluid from the interstitial space starts moving in the intravascular compartment and again the blood pressure is maintained and circulatory blood volume is maintained. This is about compensatory stage that body on its own without any external intervention has compensated for the loss and for a, uh, for a short duration of time the body has been capable of maintaining its blood pressure and adequate blood volume. But as I told that it is short term, in the subsequent part we need to uh, do any intervention so that uh, in the long term the blood volume can be maintained. This is known as progressive stage. Decreased cardiac output will lead to decreased tissue perfusion and there will be damage to microcirculation if this is not maintained well. Cellular hypoxia and release of vasoactive substances will lead to inflammatory kind of response. There will be increased capillary permeability leading to further oozing out of blood or plasma from intravascular compartment to interstitial compartment. It will lead to decreased venous return, decreased venous return will lead to decreased preload and decreased cardiac output. In this stage we need to carry out some kind of intervention, fluid uh, administration, fluid resuscitation which we will discuss further. And the last one is irreversible stage if the compensatory stage has been exhausted and in the progressive stage further intervention has not been done, the patient may slip into uh, irreversible stage and it may be fatal. The shock state becomes progressively more severe. Even though the initial cause of shock is not itself worsening, but the uh, pathophysiological mechanisms may make the condition worse. Cellular ischemia and necrosis lead to organ failure and will lead to death. Clinical manifestations, how will we come to know that the patient has gone into shock? There are subjective complaints, these are generalized findings uh, and these may be uh, deceptive and confusing for the clinician to decide whether this is actually shock. Subjective complaints may be feeling sick, weak, cold, hot, nauseated, dizzy, confused, thirsty, short of breath and there can be dry mucous membranes. Objective findings, there may be all the vital signs will be below normal. BP will be below normal, cardiac output is less and subsequently because kidneys are getting lowered blood supply then obviously glomerular filtration will be less and urine output will be less. Rapid and shallow breathing to compensate for the uh, decreased cardiac output. Dyspnea, altered sensorium because all the vital organs are not getting the enough blood supply. So if the nervous system is not getting enough of the oxygen, altered sensorium will be there. Dyspnea can be there because lungs are not getting enough oxygen. Diaphoresis may be present, cyanosis, flat neck veins which may be result of lowered blood volume. Rapid and thready pulse, slow capillary refill. Some of the few findings are decreased level of consciousness, irritability, weakness, dilated pupils, thirst and dry mucous membranes, cold clammy skin, decreased bubble sounds and hypothermia. Now once we have observed the client for its subjective and objective findings, we need to carry out some of the evaluations so that we can actually rule out that what kind of shock it is. Physical examination, then a ECG can be carried out, pulse oximetry, ABG analysis, particularly metabolic acidosis will be present in ABG analysis. CVP monitoring can be done like we have uh, discussed that there will be flat neck veins, so CVP monitoring is important and Swan Gans catheterization is important for pulmonary artery pressure. Now management, as it can be life threatening or a fatal condition, timely management is crucial. Three goals exist in the emergency man, uh, department management of the patient with hypovolemic shock. These are maximize oxygen delivery because the symptomatic uh, clue in this that the patient is not getting enough of the oxygen. So before we uh, emphasize upon the uh, cause of the shock, we need to immediately maximize oxygen delivery. Control of further blood loss has to be carried out and fluid resuscitation. The fluid which has been already lost or shifted that needs to be replaced. The goals of management can be achieved by high flow supplemental oxygen. Ventilatory support may also be required and we have to establish two large bore IV lines, one arterial line along with that fluid resuscitation is to be achieved by either isotonic crystalloid 
or hypertonic crystalloid that is 3 percent hypertonic saline solution. A few of the clinicians also support for colloid solution, but in the later of the stage and it is to be completed by control of further hemorrhage. It can be either um, surgical management for internal hemorrhage or external hemorrhage can be achieved by uh, pressure bandage. This is all about hypovolemic shock, uh, hope you might have understand about this and uh, in this slide we have uh, discussed about actually what is shock, what are the types of shock, what are the factors which are required for adequate cardiac output and if a few of the causes lead to shock then what management we need to do. Thank you.